Hello everyone and welcome to the studio. Karen Margulis here and today I have a pastel painting demonstration for you and I'll be using a pastel brand that I've never used before, Earthberry Pastels. So if you're interested in seeing Earthberry Pastels in action, then come on with me to the studio and we'll get painting. Alright, let's have a look at these pastels. Now these are Earthberry pastels and Earthberry sent these to me uh, to give me an opportunity to, to try them. So I'm really excited to try them. Thank you very much Earthberry for uh, letting me have a set. This is the Wildflower set of uh, pastels. Now these are known as eco-friendly handmade pastels. So they're all uh, very carefully handmade and eco-friendly and even the packaging is eco -friendly. I love the packaging. This is a coconut fiber insert protection and uh, recyclable uh, cardboard box. So uh, very thought uh, thoughtful uh, presentation and I really enjoy the insert that they give. So each pastel is named after a flower. Oops, let's look at the back side. So this is the, the wildflower set. So they have this really nice um, illustrated uh, piece of paper that shows the name of each uh, pastel and it's got a flower name and it tells its light fastness level which is really helpful and it also uh, shows us what color it is as, w as well as a number and then when you flip it over you can then go ahead and make your own color chart so that you can keep track of of the pastels if you decide you're running low and you want to replace pastels. Alright, so let's have a look at the shape and the size. So they're a nice generous size and a square flat pastel. What I like about this size um, is the fact that they still have hard edges. So we have this, we are able to make nice broad strokes as well as get a fine line with the sharp edges. Now, I have not, I, I tried these pastels for one small painting just to you know I was so excited but I haven't done a complete painting with them yet so we're gonna do that together before I get started on the painting I wanted to point out something that's really interesting and by the way uh, Earthberry pastels if you want to learn more about them go to their website I put the link uh, it in the description as well as a uh, coupon code for 10% off that they generously are offering uh, my viewers so go ahead in the description if you want to find more follow them on Instagram as well all that information is in the description but as I was reading on the website about these pastels um, they talk about having a new type of pastel that they have invented that they call chameleon and they they are uh, claiming that um, let's take a look at this right here because I've made a little sample. You that the chameleon pastels and some of these pastels are designated as chameleon is they go down one color, but when you blend them, they turn into another color or they get deeper or darker. Um, so here you can see, let's not look at this one, here you can see the blue, when I blended it, it got a little bit darker. There, here, this is really interesting, the purple, when I blended it, it became green. And then I put a little more purple on top just to see uh, what would happen. This darker uh, gray violet turned almost dark blue, it's really interesting. Let's do this one together, this is a chameleon pastel, so it's green. Now if I take it, and I blend it, let's see what happens. That's really interesting. It becomes warmer. It becomes more of a brighter green and this is kind of a lighter, uh, duller green. So that's really interesting and you might think, well, why would I use that? Well, you can, it, you can use it to really enhance your, your um, layering. So for example, say I'm using this green, I can then come back with the original to put on top of it and I just get a little bit more complexity in the layering. So a really interesting feature of these pastels, I think it's going to take some getting used to to, to remember to uh, that some of these are chameleons and to make use of them. So I'm going to try to do that. Um, Alright, so 
I'm going to get started on the demo. And I really appreciate you being here and watching this demo today. And, I, and if you like what you see, please go ahead and like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. All of that helps me to grow this channel and to share the pastel love. I also want to encourage you to stick with me to the end. I have been told that my paintings go through a very ugly stage. Uh, someone wrote to me and said they, they tend to be a hot mess. And I, I, I agree. So stick with me through the hot mess and I'll try to pull it together at the end. So sticking with me to the end also helps this YouTube algorithm. So I really appreciate it if you can do that. All right. So I'm going to be painting this really moody um, meadow scene with a little bit of misty, uh, foggy background. I went ahead and already did an initial drawing. I'm working on a piece of uh, Wallace paper Belgian mist. So those of you who have been uh, painting for a while will be familiar with Wallace sanded paper, which is no longer in production, but I have pulled this from my stash. If you want to have a similar type of paper, you can use really any sanded paper and just simply tone it to this nice warm brown tone. All right, and I went ahead and I already did the initial drawing. I placed some of the flowers. I have when I paint um, light flowers what I call the one inch rule. So if they're going to be smaller than an inch, I, I can uh, easily add them on top of all the grass. But the larger ones I've made room for. So the first thing I'm going to do is block in all of the dark colors. And so I'm going to start by creating a dark pathway kind of around these larger flowers all the way to the foreground. And I have selected a really nice dark uh, shade. This one's supposed to be a chameleon. Let's see what happens. They're not all chameleons. I'm just curious as to what happens when you blend it. It kind of gets a little bit brighter. Um, but anyways, I'm layering the dark, and if you uh, have seen my demos before, then you know that I don't like to just have one layer of dark. I like to layer multiple layers of dark. So I'm com coming in with another dark, a dark violet this time. And as I'm doing this demo, you know, I'm really experimenting as well. That's not, that one didn't go on as dark as it looks. I want to stick with the darks. Here's a dark brown. I'm building up these layers of dark trying to keep the same value. And I think that's going to do it for the dark. Um, I call this uh, my um, suggested pathway and it's going to be what holds the flowers and the grasses in place. Sometimes I call it dirt. Uh, that's another name that I like to give it. So next thing, once I've blocked in all the darks, I tend to go to block in the lights. And in this case, the lightest value is going to be the sky. And I've got that really misty, moody feeling. So before I do the sky, I want to go ahead and block in some of those um, distant trees. And I'm using this really nice gray down blue. That's a perfect color. Uh, this color is supposed to be a chameleon. Let's see what happens. It's a little bit darker. Yeah, definitely. So interesting to play around with this idea of the chameleon. I'm also using this uh, nice gray neutral um, gray violet. So here's a blue, a gray blue, here's a blue violet. These are beautiful um, grayed down colors, which makes it makes them perfect when you're trying to uh, paint a landscape and you really want to get that moody feeling. Here's a little bit of a brighter blue, but it's still a cool. And there's some trees that are kind of in the foreground that are a little bit, we can still see them, but they're kind of grayed out. Let's see. Let's add that mauve color. That helps push it back. All right, so now that I have the trees in place, I can go ahead and paint the sky. Now the sky in my photo looks totally white, but I don't want to really paint it with white because then it would really uh, look um, washed out. So I'm going to go with this really light blue, and I'm going to 
come in with, let's see, what do we have? I'm, I'm exploring this kind of together with you. Here's a, a light value peach. Give a little bit of warmth to the sky. Now one thing that I like to do when I'm uh, doing this initial layer is to put down some color and then come in and blend in the first layer. So let's go ahead and keep adding some color. Let that a pale yellow up, up in the sky. So I'm, I'm liking that kind of misty effect that I'm getting. So we've got our darks in place, we've got our lights in place, we've got our distant tree line. So what's happening over in this area? Well this is the meadow, the green. But I always like to put something underneath the green to make the greens feel more interesting. So uh, some dirt color, if you will. I'm going to use some purples. Here's a nice kind of grayed down peachy color. That works really well for dirt. Again, this particular set uh, has uh, a lot of neutrals. This is a pretty vibrant. You might be thinking, why are you going with that reddish salmon color? But I think it's going to be good underneath the grasses. Here's a little bit of yellow because there's some yellow grasses uh, growing in there. All right, let's go ahead and see what happens when we blend in this first layer. Now, instead of my finger, I'm going to go ahead and use a piece of pipe uh, insulation foam. And so I'm going to rub it all in so I can get everything kind of soft and out of focus. And that's going to allow me to decide where I want to put the clarity and the focus. And at this point, you might be saying, Karen, this, where, where are the flowers? You didn't put in the flowers. Well... Most of these are going to be small, right? Smaller than an inch. And while I initially had them blocked in, I pretty much covered them up at this point, but it's going to be really easy for me to put them in on top. Now it's interesting because I'm not paying attention to which colors were chameleon, but I imagine that some of them were, so we're getting that effect of some different changes. So that's the underpainting stage. They blend really nicely. They go on very nicely. They have a good consistency. They're soft, but they're not crumbly. So that's really important. All right, so now we're going to move on. I'm going to go ahead and start to block in those flowers. And I'm going to start with a... Uh, let's start with, with a gray blue. And now I'm really just, um, I'm looking at my photo for ideas. I like this guy up here. But I really want to create kind of a nice rhythm. I also want to think about how the, the, some flowers are going to be buried, right? Some are going to be in the grass. Some are going to be on top. Let's put a, one right there. And um, these guys, this was, these were chameleon, right? So we let's blend these and see what happens. They get a little bit darker and a little bit more purple looks like. That's really cool. Um, so when I'm putting in these flowers I'm just kind of arranging them in what I feel is like a pleasing rhythm. Always keeping in mind I want to have variety. A variety in shape, in size, in placement, uh, in direction, right? And again some of them are going to get hidden some of them are going to uh, stand out. I haven't used this color yet. This is a really cool neutral. Let's add a few of the uh, flowers that are kind of in the distance. That's a nice kind of gray neutral. But we have a lot of green still, so I think we need to start to introduce the greens. Now, I want to start at the... Um, at the back, we have some trees that are, that are way far away in the mist, and I like these blues and, and um, purples work really well for that. But then there's a, a line of trees that are in front of that, so I think this green works well for that. Now this was the... Uh, there's only three greens in this uh, particular set, so I have to be a little bit um, let's pull this down a little bit further. I really need to have a dark green. Let's 
see if we can add a little bit of a darker gray. And this one actually looks kind of a gray green. So I'll pull that into the dirt or shadowed area. I'm trying to create, like I said earlier, a visual pathway so that it helps lead the eye through um, all these grasses and flowers. So now when I put that green on top, I'm getting a little bit more variation. Let's pull some of that peach back out. And the yellow that's in the set is kind of bright. Let's see. I'm going to put some down and then I'm going to cover it up. When you are, and it doesn't matter what pastel brand you're working with, whenever you're working with a limited palette, so I would consider this uh, a limited, fairly limited set of pastels, right? Uh, you kind of have to think ahead as far as what can you use to um, create layers to get different colors. Because when it's limited, it just... Uh, you have to be a little bit more creative and that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what brand you're using So if you are new to pastel and you're trying to build your collection You might get frustrated that oh, I just don't have those colors You know, you don't have the colors that you you know envisioned that you should have See how you can get creative and layer to get darker or lighter or more colors now Here's this one that turned more uh, a little bit a little bit here, let's try this. It's to me more of a distant green, right? Because it's very light. But what if I put it in this area and I wanted to get it more intense, like it did? Let's see. It changes color. Now I'm I'm the type of painter where I don't like to blend too much. Maybe in the first layer, but then I I'm not a real uh, big blender. Um, so that that would take some getting used to, but I like that it's a, a it's an option. All right. So so far, what have I done? Uh, I have uh, established the dirt. I've established the distant. I've established the light in the sky, and I'm starting to put in the greens of the flowers. Um, I I do need to go a little bit more, do a little bit more in the sky, and I'm going to add. Oops, I'm going to add some of this pale yellow, light value yellow. And to really put these trees in the mist, I'm going to very lightly glide them over my blue. And then I'm going to take that blue that I used and pull back up. See, I used the darker one. So to create that feeling of mist, I'm just going back and forth. This is this is the, the, the hot mess stage of the painting, for those of you who are wondering. So stick with me, because the next uh, part can go pretty quickly. So I'm coming in there, and I'm reinforcing the flowers. Because as I added the, the um, grasses, I started to cover up some of those flowers more than I intended. So I'm going to come back, and I'm starting to press harder with the pastels. So I want to get thicker marks. Now this guy, uh, that's not a chameleon. Let's see, this one's supposed to be a chameleon. So if I'm pressing hard, it's actually blending it a little bit, so it's changing it slightly. That's really interesting. I like having that as an option. Okay, so I'm, I'm starting to uh, turn on the lights I like to say, where I'm starting to uh, add the lighter values to the, the flower shapes. Now the flowers are actually pretty um, cool or white. I'm using this orange color, which is uh, a, a warm color. It would look like there would be sunlight. So I want to cool it down and add some of that pure white just to modify that. Uh, warm peach. I like having bits of it peek through, it adds interest, but I don't I don't want the flowers to feel too too bright. Now, right now all the flowers are sitting on top and everything is kind of smooth and out of focus. So one thing that I always like to do in a painting is to come in and add some 
linear detail, right, or some thicker marks. So this is where I think the uh, shape of these pastels will, will benefit that. So what I'm doing now is I'm creating stems by using that sharp edge of the stick. And I'm just tapping and releasing, right? Tap and release. And you can do this with any square pastel. So if you're uh, trying to paint grasses or stems and you really uh, want to have uh, a nice broken quality to your lines, then this idea of pressing and releasing can give you really nice grasses. Um, so really, so any square pastel uh, will do that. If you have rounded pastels, you could roll them. I also usually like to, um, at this stage of a, in a painting, uh, make a switch to um, a softer pastel, just so I can get some thicker marks. So I'm this particular painting, I'm only using uh, this set exclusively, so I'm pushing the limits, right? Um, so let's get some linear marks. I'm using that top tip and just kind of creating some broken lines just to pull some of the grasses up. And that helps push back the the um, tree line. So I'm going to work with the greens that I have. So I'll introduce the warmer green again. And I want to see how thick I can get. Like how can I, how uh, can I get chunky marks? And I feel like we've got they're soft enough where I can go in and make some of those thicker, I like to call them juicy marks, but not every pastel has the consistency where you can get a thicker mark. So I like that I'm able to get a thicker mark um, in some of these areas. Let's add some of these warmer grasses using the side of the pastel. So I'm really just trying out um, to see how many different types of marks I can get. And that's kind of interesting. Pull some of that background in. And then, let's see, I need to darken the base of some of these flowers. So I'll just add that dark, just to give them a little bit more um, definition. So some of them are Oops. Some of them are sticking out on top of the grass, and some of them are starting to get buried. Let's see if I can't give a little detail to some of these flowers. How, how small and defined can I make my marks? So now I've got the pastel up on its tip, and I'm just pressing so that I can get some kind of thicker, but more def definition. And working nicely. So far I'm really enjoying this. All right, so let's go ahead and, and uh, bring back some spice. So remember I put some purple in that initial underpainting. This one's a chameleon. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to put some little purple marks just to add some spice, just to add some interest. And let's see what happens if I, if I shade it. Oh, it gets a little bit duller. So here's an interesting thing. So if you put one in and you shade it, so it gets a little bit duller, and then put in... Yeah, it's, it's multiple colors in one stick. I think the trick is to remember uh, which one's a, a chameleon, right? Exactly. Very cool. Interesting. Here's this green that's supposed to also change. That might be a good idea. Michael's suggesting it would be interesting to put your chameleons in one section of your box so that way you can remember. Um, I suppose, it, you know, the more you would work with them, the more you would remember, right? Um, but that's very interesting. All right. Well, at this stage in a painting uh, is when I usually take a... a, a time to step back and evaluate um, and see if there's anything that needs to be adjusted. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of that sky blue down into some of the 
flowers in the shadows. I see this really pretty turquoise. I'm going to see if I can't introduce some of that turquoise in the distance just for some of those really distant um, trees. And all it's just such a pretty color. And then there's a darker turquoise. That can be down here in the shadows. And so that turquoise talks to that turquoise. And then we get some interesting color harmony. Yeah. Well, I think I've taken this painting as far as I want to at this point. Uh, overall, I'm really excited by these. I think they'll be a, a, a nice addition to my collection. You know, I don't have any one particular favorite uh, pastel. I find that uh, all pastels have merit and you just have to find where they work, like what type of paper, what type of subject. But the shape, the size, the fact that these are eco-friendly, um, love the chart. I'm really intrigued by the chameleon effect. That's really cool. So once again, thank you Earthberry uh, for sharing these with me and uh, I'll definitely be using them uh, in my paintings. Hope you've enjoyed this demo. Uh, Remember, like, subscribe, and if you want even more pastel painting instruction, I invite you to join me over on my Patreon group. We have over 500 videos uh, there and lessons and challenges, and it's a great community. So head on over there. The link, of course, is in the description. And yeah, thanks for tuning in, and let's go paint.